Does everyone have a communion cup? Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Main Street. Uh, first of all, please take note of the many prayer concerns that are in your bulletin. Um, lots of our friends, family, relatives need our prayers, so um, just please do that on your prayer list. There are birthdays this week, Sarah Lear on the 8th. Tom Patterson on the 9th, and Betty Smith. Um, Tom and Betty, the altar roses are in their honor of their 90th and over birthday. Um, Tom will be 99. Is that right? No, no. He'll be 101. Yes. There's also a note of the uh, passing of Lenora McQuinn and Jean Cassingham, who were both longtime members, and uh, just keep their families in your prayers as those two lovely ladies have left us. If you're interested in um, giving to the humanitarian assistance for the Ukrainian people, the information is there in your bulletin regarding that, too, so you can make checks um, available through UMCOR. Charity Circle is meeting this week on Wednesday in the parlor. Uh, upcoming services will be Monday, Thursday on the 14th. That'll be at 7 here in the sanctuary. And on Fr Good Friday, there will be a community service at Wayman Chapel, and that's the 15th. Um, there are no other special events happening until Easter when we will have one service um, at 10 o'clock here in the sanctuary. There are some events on the calendar that you can note, and I believe that would be all of the announcements for this morning. So the passing of the peace. Peace be with you. And also with you. Please share the peace of God. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. with you, all of you over there.
Please stand as you're able and join me in the call to worship. <clears throat> Rise up and declare the glory of the Lord. We sing for joy. The glory of the Lord shines over all. Rise up and proclaim how great is the Lord in all the earth. We join the heavenly host in worshiping the Lord of all creation. Praise, Praise be, be to God, God Lord, Lord of, of all life. life. Amen. Amen. And now join in the hymn of praise in the cross of Christ I glory. Shall we join together in our opening prayer? Lord of all, we bow before you. We come with humble hearts to this hour of worship. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Let our hearts be united to do your will. May our service in your name be welcomed at your throne. Let it be worthy of your kingdom. Cause your people to live in peace with each other. May our warring come to an end. Let us be healed from the violence that afflicts us. Show forth your mighty hand to reveal the paths of life you would have us trod. May we be guided along them by the way of your Son. Let us not slip or waver in your righteous feet. Forgive us when we fail. Restore us when we are wounded. Encourage us when we doubt. Be in our midst this Lenten season and for all time. We ask these things in Jesus' sacred name. Amen. You may be seated. The lesson from the Old Testament today is from Isaiah 43, 16 through 21. Thus says the Lord who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters, who brings forth chariot and horse, army and warrior. They lie down, they cannot rise. 
They are extinguished, quenched like a wick. Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The wild beasts will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches. For I give water in the wilderness, rivers in the desert, to give drink to my chosen people, the people whom I formed for myself, that they might declare my praise. Holy words, holy wisdom. Thanks be to God. The New Testament lesson is from John 12, 1 through 8. <clears throat> Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. There they made him a supper. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at table with him. Mary took a pound of costly ointment of pure nard and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair and the house was filled with the fragrance of the ointment. But Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, he who was to betray him, said, Why was this ointment not sold for 300 denarii and given to the poor? This he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief. And as he had the money box, he used to take what was put in it. Jesus said, Let her alone. Let her keep it for the day of my burial. The poor will always have you, but you will not always have me. This is the gospel of the risen Christ. Thanks be to God.
Today is the fourth Sunday in Lent. No, today is the fifth Sunday in Lent. Yes, today's the fifth Sunday in Lent because next, oh gosh, <laughs> next Sunday is Palm Sunday and then Holy Week and then Easter. We're getting that close and just as preachers can forget what day it is, <laughs> it might be, uh, uh, it might be worthwhile simply to, sh to share again with you the brief flow of the Lenten journey that Jesus has been making. We're not always familiar with the sweep of the story because there's a week between each Sunday's message and we tend to go away with whatever was said in our hearts and minds and by the time the chicken's gone or the popcorn's finished and bonanza's over, no, wait a minute, that's a long time ago. <laughs> long time ago. It's just that as time passes, we tend, to, we tend to forget. So I thought this morning, before we get to Palm Sunday and, and the, 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 the incredible adventure that that is, listen just briefly to what it's been like since the Mount of Transfiguration. Jesus comes down off the Mount of Transfiguration having been for the second time announced by the voice from heaven, this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. But at the Transfiguration, these words are added. Listen to him. Twice the voice has announced Jesus to be <coughs> the Son of God, but not just the Son of God, the beloved Son of God. And it's interesting that in the Hebrew, the name David is the word for beloved. That's the translation, beloved. And so as a Jewish audience listens to these words, behold, this is my beloved Son with whom I'm well pleased. This is my Davidic son with whom I am well pleased. And all of a sudden they know from the house of David comes the Messiah. You see, he's, there's some theological intertwining there, but there's also some historic reminding of the people. This Jesus who comes down off the mountain is the beloved Davidic son of God. And when he gets down off the mountain... He says to them something they don't want to hear. Do you remember what he says? I must go to Jerusalem, and there I must be put to suffering, shame, death, and be raised on the third day. They don't want to hear that. None of them want to hear that. I mean, after all, you've just been in the presence of Moses and Elijah. You come down off the mountain full of glory, the son of the living God, and you tell us you're going to die? No, 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 no. And Jesus, remember, God said, listen to him. He is the one who will tell you the truth. On Ash Wednesday, we remind ourselves that we are dust. Dust thou art, dust thou shalt return. Repent, believe the gospel. Smudge of ashes in the form of a cross on our foreheads to remind us of our mortality. The first week, Jesus is in the wilderness, the place of, 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 uh, of uh, 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 fear and trembling and unknown and danger. Um, in Jesus' day, there were bears in the wilderness. He meets the devil. And three times he's tempted, and three times he rejects those temptations. And each time it's because he already knows about the truth of not being fed by bread alone. He knows indeed that you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. And those kingdoms that Satan offers him, that the devil offers him, they already belong to Jesus. Then anything the devil's doing that Jesus needs, 
So he fends them off. The second week, the Abrahamic covenant is renewed or restated. Abraham, remember, is worried that his heir will be either the slave child Ishmael or his far distant relation Eleazar of Damascus. God says to him, no, again, no, no, no. You will have your own son. You will have your own heir, and I will make of you a great nation. Well, fine and dandy, but then we have this uh, uh, bit of story from the gospel where the Pharisees come to Jesus and say, Herod wants to kill you. Again, we see the difference between what the earthly rulers want and what Jesus wants. And what does Jesus want in that story? Would that I could hover over you, bring you in like the mother hen. Love, compassion, comfort. The differences between what the world will offer and what Jesus is prepared to give, they are different. The next week, the blood on the, temp on the temple altar the Tower of Siloam, which were the greater sinners. Jesus said, the same will happen to you unless you repent. We're back to this repentance theme in the season of Lent. And then he tells this story of the fig tree, the unproductive, unfruitful fig tree. And you'll remember what he says to the owner of the vineyard, which is God. Let it alone. Again, this year, I'll take care of it. And if it doesn't bear fruit in the, at the end of the year, you can cut it down. But we know that Jesus is going to be dead, buried, and raised from the dead well before the year is up. And so somehow, even now, Jesus is making provision even for the unfruitful fig tree. God will not need to cut it down because Jesus will have given it life through his own resurrection. And remember, the vineyard, the fig tree, the garden, all of that are metaphors for the nation of Israel. They will be restored. The next week, that's week five, we have the story of the prodigal son. It's as perfect a story as there is in the scriptures. Mark Twain used to travel around the Midwest and he uh, talked to uh, groups, principally tent meeting groups, most of them women tent meeting groups. And he was always fond of saying, and he said it with a tongue in cheek and a twinkle in his eye, I wish I'd never read the Bible. And of course the women just, like if they were in a room, they'd suck the wallpaper off the room. <gasps> And then he would add, so that I could read all over again the story of the prodigal son for the first time. He wanted that joy of hearing that story again. And if you think the story of the prodigal son is only about good news, you haven't read the story. There's death hovering over it in every place, in every verse nearly. What do you have to do to get an inheritance? Somebody has to die. And that's what the second son asks his father to do, essentially. Because doesn't he want his share of the inheritance? Well, the only way he can get it is if the dad dies. Well, it's a metaphor. It's a, it's a way of saying to us that the father is prepared to give the son what is his at the cost of his own life. And then the son takes that money, and what does he do with it? He lives the life of death. He tends swine. He, he's not even fit to be a servant out there in the world. And he squanders everything. He comes home, and what does the father do? Upon seeing the son, what does the father do? runs to get him. Do you know why he runs to meet him? 
No, not, well, yes, but not, that's not the principal reason he does it. It's within that love that he does this running to him because we're not Jews. We don't know the law. Let me remind you of Deuteronomy chapter 21, verses 18, 19, 20, and 21. Did you know that it was lawful for the town folk to stone to death the son that shames or embarrasses his father? And that's what the second son has done. And so the father running to meet him saves his life because if the boy gets to town, what can the town folk do to him? They can kill him. And so the father runs to him, gets him before he gets into town, gives him a ring, which means he's now wealthy. Gives him shoes on his feet, which means he's no slave in this house. But the most important thing he gives him is the best robe, we're told. The best robe. And in any Jewish house, that is the prayer shawl. And what does the prayer shawl allow a man to do? Attend the synagogue and be a part of the prayers that are offered there. And who will be praying with this son now wearing the best robe? Those very people who would have stoned him to death. What has the father done? He has made it impossible for the people to do what the law permits. Would that that could happen in other places, in other generations across the globe. In any case, the father doesn't stop there. What's the next thing the father does? He throws a feast. He throws a party. And what gets slaughtered? More death. More death. Standing there waiting, the only thing it's going to do in life is die. Now, how big is a fatted calf? Seven, eight hundred pounds, maybe? How many people can you feed, even with a dressed out 800, 900 pound steer? Three and a half thousand people, maybe? Because you got the macaroni and cheese and the, and the green bean salad and, and everything. You got all the rest of that stuff there. But you could feed the entire town with the food from that fatted calf. Now, what do you know about the reciprocity laws in Israel? The obligations. If you go to someone's home, you will be fed. You are obligated to return that favor. So what has the Father done for the entire town? He has obligated each and every one of them to invite him and his son to dinner. Wow. How long would, how long would it take you to get to 3,000 dinners? the rest of your life and into eternity. Exactly right. You see how this story of the prodigal son is so powerfully and, and, and so wonderfully and, and so amazingly loved. Beyond that, he then deals with the son, the elder son. The bottom line is, he says, you're my son and everything I have is yours. Isn't that what we want? God to say to us, when we've been a bit of a fool or we haven't been willing to forgive or we don't deserve it, everything I have is yours. Come on in and eat with everybody else. The prodigal son's story is only the kicker for what else is going to happen in the season of Lent. This week, we have a, a description of God being God as well as God can ever be. The people are in the wilderness, and what does God do for the people who are in the wilderness? Feeds them, waters them, makes their path straight. That text from Isaiah tells us that God will do whatever it takes to save the people that have been formed for him for his own pleasure. That's where we are in the season of Lent. We're remembering, even though we are dust, we have been created for the pleasure of God. 
And God will do whatever it takes to see that that pleasure is fulfilled in his own heart. Now, that doesn't mean God's heart doesn't break from time to time. Lord knows my precious mother had her heart broken by my brother over and over and over again. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I might have been me. But there is a love in the very heart of God that overcomes all of that brokenness. Ours, even the broken heart of God. And finally, even the broken body of Jesus. Now, about Judas and Mary, or is it Martha? Who fixes the meal? So Mary is the one who pours out the ointment on Jesus' feet and, wash, and washes and, and, and rubs it in with her hair. You got that? I've been around women who smell pretty good. When Julia wears that special perfume, I just can't think of anything else but her. Can you imagine this woman in the next days walking around town having the aroma of that pure ointment in her hair? And what does Jesus say to Judas and the others who think that excuse me, very, very expensive oil should have been sold and given to the poor? What does he say? You, the poor you have with you always. But this is what he says. Then he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief, and he had taken the money in the money box and used it to take what was put into it. And Jesus said, let her alone. Let her keep it for the day of my burial. The poor you always have with you, but you do not always have me. Too often that text suggests, or it is made for us to believe, that we don't have to care for the poor. They'll always be there. We can take care of them any time, any time, any time. But I think Jesus says it to say to us, if you think you ever get to the end of your Christian witness, you're wrong. Because the poor you always have with you. You can always give to the poor. And remember, that's one of the three disciplines in the season of Lent, to fast, to pray, and to give to the poor. And here is Jesus suggesting you can still do that. But he says, leave her alone, let her alone. And we've heard that phrase before. It's what Jesus said about the fig tree. It's the word afis. It means to forgive. Jesus talks about repentance, but in the season of Lent, he's more about forgiveness. He's more about forgiveness than repentance. He's more about forgiveness than repentance. And that's what we are expected to do. Forgive. Not just fig trees, but women who anoint Jesus for his burial. Forgive her. Let her be. Let her alone. Forgive her. Because the poor you always have with you. Here we are on this fifth Sunday in Lent. And we see the trajectory of this story from the glory of Mount Transfiguration to the forgiveness offered to a woman on her knees anointing Jesus' feet. That's a huge journey. That's a way difficult thing to be done. And Jesus has invited us to be with him along this journey every step, seeking forgiveness as we forgive others. We have before us this morning a meal, a broken meal, that represents the body and blood of Jesus. And we are asked We are asked in our brokenness, our fallenness, our sinfulness, to believe this meal is the thing that will save us into eternity.
the sacrifice Jesus makes and the glory it reveals is what we take into ourselves, body and blood. I invite you to prepare your hearts for this very thing on this fifth Sunday in Lent. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, in whom you have revealed yourself, our light and our salvation. In his divinity, he emptied himself as a humble servant, even to the point of death on a cross, that every knee should bow and every tongue confess that Christ is Lord. On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took the bread, broke the, blessed the bread, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body, broken for you. Do so in remembrance of me. And likewise, when the supper was over, he took the cup. And declared, this is my blood poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Take and drink and do so in remembrance of me. So I invite you, take the bread. and eat, and do so in remembrance of Jesus. Likewise, take the cup and drink and believe that this is the blood of Christ. And now with the confidence of the children of God, we are bold to pray. Eternal God, we give thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And though a thing or two has been out of order, Shall we stand together and join in singing the closing hymn? We will ask that God bless our offering, that as it has been given, it be received, be used in the world, and knowing that that is what God will do, let us give thanks. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. Amen.